everyone, it's me again, Teacher Koy of ESIP Math Tutorial and welcome to my channel. And for today's video, pag-usapan po natin yung week 8 ng ating grade 8 mathematics. So this is module 8 at ang topic po natin ay reasoning and writing of proof. But before that, if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell para po lagi po kayo updated sa lahat ng mga bagong videos po natin. Okay, so let's start. So this is Mathematics 8, Quarter 2, Module 8, Reasoning and Writing of Proofs. So our learning competencies we have here, uses inductive or deductive reasoning in an argument and writes a proof both direct and indirect okay so our objectives at the end of the lesson the students are expected to determine the reasoning used in an argument write direct proof and use indirect proof in proving arguments so for our lesson one we have here inductive and deductive reasoning so ano po ba tong inductive reasoning at saka deductive reasoning first we have here inductive reasoning so, inductive reasoning takes specific examples to make a general rule, generalization, or conclusion. So, ibig sabihin nito, from specific to general. So, that is the inductive reasoning. And we have here three stages. Look for a pattern. Look at several examples. Use diagrams and tables to help you discover a pattern. So, it means, uh, pag may given, kung baga, um, either you can make, you can draw a figure or a pattern, Diba? So, ito po yung ibig sabihin ng number 1. And for number 2, make a conjecture. So, ano pa tong conjecture? Conjecture is para siyang, kumbaga, parang conclusion. Okay? Although, um, uh, not proven but meron kang conclusion. So, use the examples to make a general conjecture. Then, verify the conjecture. Use logical reasoning to verify that the conjectures is true in all cases. So, Para mas maintindihan po natin, we have here the example. So, inductive reasoning. So, from specific to general. So, our example is we have here, describe a pattern in the sequence of numbers 1, 4, 16, and 64. Predict the next number. So, this is this is specific, di ba? Specific po siya. Then, our answer, each number is 4 times a previous number. The next number is 256. So, our pattern here is, kung nakikita natin sa example, di ba? Yung first number is 1. Yung second number is 4. Yung third number is 16. Yung fourth number is 64. So, kung baga, yung pattern po dito ay, each number is 4 times the previous number. So, like this one. 1 times 4, the result is 4. Then, 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 times 4 is 64. So, to predict the next number, 64 multiplied by 4 so our the next number is 256 okay so from specific to general and we have here deductive reasoning deductive reasoning is a type of logical reasoning which begins using basic and general statements to prove more complicated statements it uses accepted facts to reason in step-by-step -step manner until we arrive at the desired statement. So, from general to specific po siya. To basic and general statements. Then, to prove more complicated statement, statements. So, from general, tapos isa-isahin natin. So, general to specific. And we have here a key example of deductive reasoning. So, we have here the statements. Diba? Basic po yung statement or general. Filipinos are hospitable. So, that is the statement. So, since Filipinos are hospitable, therefore, Bonifacio is a Filipino. Example, Bonifacio is a Filipino. So, our conclusion is, therefore, he is hospitable. Diba? So, statement po natin ay general. Then, our conclusion is specific. General to specific. Okay, so, thus, deductive, induct, thus, inductive reasoning is judging by experience while deductive reasoning is judging by logical progression. Then, for our lesson number two, we have here direct proof. So, two kinds of proof are commonly used in proving theorems. Kasi nabi natin theorems, um, gamitan natin sila ng direct proof or indirect proof. 
di ba? Ito yung two kinds of proof na ginagamit po natin, direct proof and indirect proof. First, we're going to discuss what is a direct proof. So, from the word direct, di ba? Direct, diretso. So, in direct proof, one assumes that the premises are true and then deduces the conclusion from them. So, assume po natin na yung statement or yung isang bagay ay totoo. Tapos, at the end, isa-isahin natin, then we can conclude kung ano po yung bagay na yun. Diba? So, that, that is a direct proof. So, we have here the steps in writing a direct proof. First, let's illustrate what is to be proven by drawing the necessary figure or figures. So, illustrate po natin yung kung ano po yung i-prove natin. Uh, we can draw figure or figures or any any or pattern, di ba? Para mas 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 ma, mas makita po natin yung ano po yung dapat i-prove natin. Then for number two is list the given statements. Write the conclusion to be proven. So, list po natin yung mga makikita natin statements or given statements based on our illustration, di ba? Or sa figure po natin. Then mark the figure or figures as needed according to what you can deduce from the given statements. So, lagyan natin ng mga marks, markings, di ba? Para mas madali. Then, write all statements including the simplest details along with the reasons in two-column table. So, lagyan natin yung ating statements sa table, di ba? From si yung, yung, yung detalye niya. Tapos, yung ano yung reason or your or um, reason na but naging ganyan yung isang bagay okay then next is oftentimes this, the first steps are the given statements and the last step is the conclusion that you need to prove so most of the times or oftentimes yung first statement po na yung 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 given statement yung first statement is that is the given statement diba tapos yung uh, last step yung 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 nasa huli yan po yung um, conclusion Okay, so para mas maintindihan pa natin, we'll go to our example. We have our example, prove that two right angles are congruent. So, prove natin na yung dalawang right angles are congruent. Diba? So, solution, restate the statement using the if-then form. So, if angle A and angle B are right angles, then angle A is congruent to angle B. Okay, this is the symbol of a congruent. So, tama naman, di ba? Pag si angle A at saka si angle B ay isang, silang dalawa ay right angles. So, it means, yung measurement ni angle A ay the same kay angle B. Di ba? That's why angle A is congruent to angle B. Then, next is visualize what is to be proven by drawing the necessary figures. So, para mas maintindihan mo natin, let's draw a figure. So, we have here, okay, angle A. Ito po yung figure niya ito si angle B. Diba? Prove natin na yung dalawang angle, yung right angles are congruent. Yung ating restatement natin is, yung ginamitan na if then form, if angle A and angle B are right angles, therefore, the measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle B. Diba? They are congruent. So, assume the hypothesis, the list the given statements. So, ang yung, yung given po natin ay ito. Angle A and angle B are right angles. Diba? Yan po yung given statement, prove that the two right angles are congruent. So, para ma-prove po natin, so therefore, assume natin na si angle A at saka si angle B are right angles. So, that is given. Then, establish the truth of the conclusion. So, establish po natin. So, yung conclusion, so kung yung conclusion po niya, since yung dalawang angles po natin, angle A at saka si angle B ay, they're both right angles, so it means, they are congruent. Uh, Di ba? So, prove natin na si angle A is congruent to angle B. So, next, so we have here the proof. So, dalawang table, yung statement at saka yung reason. So, angle A and angle B are right angles. Diba? Given po to. Diba? Dito, if we go back to the figure. Ito. Diba? Si angle A at saka si angle B ay right angles. So, that is given. And next is we have the measurement of angle A is equal to 90 degrees. So, pag sinabi natin angle A and angle B are right angles. So, yung measurement ni angle A is 90 degrees. Therefore, the measurement of angle B is also 90 degrees. Diba? So, that is based on the definition of right angles. Diba? Kasi, kapag right angles, 90 degrees po siya. Okay, the next, 
angle A, the measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle B. Yes, check. Since they are right, both they are both they're both right angles. Then the measurement of angle B is 90, and the measurement of angle B is 90. So therefore, the measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle B. So that is a transitive property of equality. So the measurement of angle A is equal to the measurement of angle B, and the measurement of angle A. Uh, and I mean, the measurement of angle B is equal also the measurement of angle A. So that's it. The next, therefore, angle A, since yung measurement nila ay magkapareho, so therefore, angle A is congruent to angle B. Diba? So that's from the definition of congruent angles. Pag sinabi din congruent, it means pareho po sila ng measurement. So that's it for our direct proof. So I hope na gets nyo po yung um, ibig kong sabihin. Now, we will go to lesson 3, indirect proof. So, an indirect proof usually is a paragraph form. The opposite of the statement to be proven is assumed true until the assumption leads to contradiction. So, we have here the steps in writing an indirect proof. So, if we go back here, the statement to be proven is assumed true. Assume natin na totoo until the assumption leads to contradiction. Pag mag-contradict sila, so it means... Hindi po siya totoo. Diba? Not true. So, steps in writing an indirect proof. First, assume that the conclusion is false. So, assume natin yung conclusion is false para mag-contradict po sila. Okay. Then, second is show that the assumption leads to a contradiction of the hypothesis or unknown statement that is true. Then, third is since the assumption about the conclusion is false, then the, con then the conclusion must be true. Okay. So, we have here the example. Um, if n, I have an example, if n is an integer, so if n daw is an integer and n squared is odd, well, odd number or odd, then n is odd. So prove this is true indirectly. So eh, prove natin to sa using the indirect proof. Kapag si n daw ay isang integer, tapos yung n squared is odd, then n is also an odd number. Okay. So, we'll prove this one. So, first, diba, assume the opposite of n is odd. So, diba, if we go back to the steps, diba, nakalagay dito, assume that the conclusion is false. Okay. So, since yung given is odd, diba, odd number, so, i-assume natin na yung opposite ng n is odd. So, therefore, n is even. Okay, di ba? Opposite. Now, we will square n and see what happens. So, if n is even or even number, then by definition of an even number, di ba, n is equal to 2a where a is any integer. Di ba, n is equal to 2 times a which is a is any integer. So, magiging ganito. If we square that one, n squared is equal to quantity 2a square. If we expand this one, magiging is equal to 4a squared. Diba? 4a squared. So, this means that n squared is multiple of 4. But to 4. So, no odd number can be divided evenly by an even number. So, hindi po tayo makapag-divide ng isang odd number by using, diba? A -a -a odd number evenly. Kasi, lagi siyang may point something. Diba? Kasi, odd number. Unlike ng even number na even po yung pag-divide natin. So, this contradicts our assumption that n is even. So, it means, yung ating assumption na n is even, so, contradict po sila sa ating given na n is odd. So, therefore, n must be odd number. Para, yung n squared po natin is also odd. Okay? So, I hope nag-gets nyo po yung ibig kong sabihin. So, once again, it's me, Teacher Koy of Easy Tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.